Hey guys and welcome to BitGlen again here. Uh, this is my cryptocurrency journey that you're following and uh, I tend to upload a video almost every day uh, just showing you what I've learned that day and what it is I'm using and how I look to invest my money so that I can teach you how to, well not teach you but hopefully give you some tips on what not to do and what to do when starting your own cryptocurrency journey. So. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel oh, down here somewhere if you want to see more of my content and see how I get on in my journey. Uh, also like this video, uh, it helps somehow, I'm, I'm not sure how, but <laughs> give it a thumbs up anyway. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, all bit Glenn. Um, normally I do that bit at the end, but I thought, you know what, I'll just get it over and done with. So when I'm finished saying what I say, I can just say goodbye, otherwise I forget what, what to do. So anyway... Today we're going to be looking at the markets to start off with, um, then I'm going to be showing you my Hashflare account because uh, I did a big upgrade yesterday on it, and then I want to show you how I might be getting an Antminer S9 for about $75 um, potentially, uh, we'll, we'll see. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So uh, let's start off with the market. So Everything today, let's refresh this so it's all up to date. Today is December the 12th, 2017. It's currently 9.45 in the morning in the UK. And everything is up. Uh, oh, apart from me from Classic. <laughs> um, everything's up. Bitcoin is back up to the 17,000 mark, which it actually dipped down to sort of 16.8, 16.9, and then it went up to 17.1. So it's been hovering around the 17,000 mark, um, which is... Um, Great news, obviously, for anyone who's doing mining, the more the coin goes up, more profits. Um, Ethereum's up to $524. Um, I think that's the highest it's ever been. I'm not too sure on that. I'll have to check, but it's the highest I've seen it for um, a good week or so. Bitcoin Cash, um, I remember it being about the 1,300, 1,400 marks, but it is up, but um, it's not as high as it um, normally is. Litecoin is the biggest winner, so I was really happy about this because I don't know why. I read, I think I was reading on Twitter the guy who, um, the guy who made, you know, essentially invented Litecoin, obviously off of Bitcoin. Uh, he was putting loads of things on Twitter and saying how much it had gone up. Charlie Lee's name is, um, and I don't know. I just thought, yeah, do you know what? Litecoin is pretty good actually. It's cheap transaction fees. It normally goes through faster. And it runs off the Bitcoin um, algorithm and all that. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll just I'll transfer the money into Litecoin. I did that yesterday morning, I'd say. And it was at about a hundred and I'd say a hundred and fifty dollars. Um so when it got up to near the two hundred dollar mark, I thought, yes, because I had about a thousand pounds worth of it. Um then it went up to 220. Um, I actually checked my phone in the middle of the night when I went to toilet. It was about half one, two in the morning in the UK. Um, and it was up to like 220. And I thought, oh my God, yes. Oh, I bet that drops down before I wake up tomorrow morning. But currently now, it's now sitting at 246. So it's just on a constant up at the minute. Um, I would imagine that's going to... This is me guessing. That, you know, Don't um, take this as any financial advice. Uh, I would... As, I would guess that that's going to hit sort of around the 280 mark and then it's going to probably dip back down to around 250 and then that's where it will stay for a few days. Prove me wrong, Litecoin. Prove me wrong. Um, Ripple and uh, IOTA, obviously I'm not too into them I, I just because I, I don't know what they are and how they work and I haven't been following them as much. But they're on the up, so if you've got that uh, in your wallet, then um, happy days. Dash, Dash, I was actually going to transfer, because Litecoin went up so much uh, over the course of yesterday evening and that, I thought, you know what, I might change my Litecoin into Dash, um, because it was on a downer at the time, it was uh, actually in the red, so I thought, oh, that's one of the only coins that's in the red, so the chance are it's going to go up with the others, so I was going to transfer it into Dash, I decided not to, I thought I'll leave it on Litecoin, because Litecoin was sort of going back up to where it was before it got up to about two I think 200 and something before and then it just dropped back down to the 150 mark but what I've noticed with these cryptocurrencies is that they sort of level out for a couple of days have a massive spike and then go back down 
not down to where they were before, but a little bit higher. And then they carry on from that point onwards and then they keep going up. So it's almost like, you know, like when you um, get on an escalators um, and you see the metal step sort of level out at the top, at the top bit. But then they sort of obviously they go up and then they keep doing that. Anyway, that's, in my mind, that's what it's like. Um, Monero, obviously, that's up as well, which is good news. Almost $300 a coin, uh, which is good for me because I'm mining that off Genesis Mining, although a small amount. Um, that is on the up as well. So maybe I'll upgrade my Monero contract at some point as well with them. But they're the main uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, they're all on the up, which is good news. I would imagine that's going to level out or um, even dip back down probably in the next two days, I'd say. So mate, today is Tuesday. So I would imagine by Thursday there will be a dip. Um, you'll see a lot of these in the red. That's, that's just me guessing, um, which I hope not because... Um, as of Friday midday, <clears throat> the Envian ICO, which obviously I've been explaining to you guys uh, for a long time, it got delayed by two weeks. It was meant to be December the 1st, but it got delayed to December the 15th. So this Friday at midday, um, it goes live, hopefully. And then um, obviously I'll be putting my money into that, about £1,200, which is about $1,500 worth of tokens if I obviously get in there quick enough and get them. Um, yeah, so I need to hope that, you know, the <laughs> my Litecoins or Ethereum is, you know, dips right down by 40% because obviously being in this wallet, and this was this is the gamble you take, being in these wallets, it goes up and down every day. Look, so you can see it's going up now. So <clears throat> whereas obviously you've got your money in your bank, I know you could say the pound versus dollar is always going up and down. A bit like cryptocurrency is the same. And obviously the dollar versus, uh, you know, like the money in your bank versus buying the coins at that time. But I just hope that the, um, the, the run of the coins going up last until at least Friday and then obviously I can buy the maximum amount of tokens, the RCR20 tokens. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at um, as of today. I was going to transfer my Litecoin into Dash like I said earlier. The reason I didn't was because the fees seemed to be well high. Like I remember Litecoin and Ephraim when you sort of exchange them on Exodus, the fees were quite low, whereas anything to do with Bitcoin was like really high. But let's say, I'll just show you now. So if I transfer Litecoin into, well, let's try Ephraim. So if I do all of it, if I transfer a thousand pounds, it's gonna cost me, sorry, that's 1,007. I'm gonna receive 970. So I'm gonna lose 37 pounds um, for that exchange, which I don't expect it to be free, but then, to me, that's it seems like quite a lot of money. So um, who knows? I might. What do you guys think? Comment down below if you agree with me. Um, so then I thought, oh, we'll try. Let's try Dash. How much was that? Uh, again, that's thirty-four pound. Now I remember when I transferred Litecoin into Ethereum before, it cost me something like you know, a couple pounds. Um, let's try Bitcoin. See what that is. Whew. <laughs> that is. Uh, 53 pound um, which obviously in American dollars if you're watching in America that's about $80, $85 um, it must be one of these that's low god that's even worse <laughs> that's 80 quid so anything to change Litecoin at the minute is uh, really expensive so <clears throat> that's why I didn't I thought Do you know what Litecoin's on an app I'll, I'll just ride it out but obviously I'm glad I didn't because and I'm glad that the fees were high at the time because it made me keep my Litecoin in there. My Litecoin has gone up. Before I went to bed last night, it was at 770. Now it's at 1050. So I literally gained about 300 pound last night. Which is insane. <laughs> 300 pound while you sleep. But um, obviously it could go down today. So it is complete swings and roundabouts. And I'm not going to be a millionaire overnight for that. So that's where we're at with the markets. And um, obviously my... Um, wallet hash flare so after doing my video yesterday so if you haven't seen it yet i've done a video on youtube um how to earn fifty thousand dollars a year from one thousand eight hundred and it isn't some sort of you know scam or me trying to sell you something this is just something that 
you know, I sat there and looked into and done the maths. Um, so feel free to have a watch that video. It is 41 minutes long. When I try and explain stuff, as you could probably tell, I like to be spoon-fed information. If someone's teaching me something brand new that I've never heard of before, I like to know, well, why is that doing that? Well, how did that get there in the first place? Why is it, you know? And I like to try and learn it little chunks of information at a time. So when I explain stuff, even though I know what I'm trying to say, I try and word it very slowly, very calmly, and little bits of information at a time so that um, you can take it in. Um, but saying that, you, people probably watch my video and think, God, this guy's boring, boring, he's talking for like half an hour at a time. But, you know, some people like it, some people won't. But anyway, my Hashflare account, I did that video yesterday. And at that point in time, my uh, account, I don't know if it shows it on there. Um, I had, yeah, one terahash. So, and I had loads of little ones from reinvestment. So I had one point, one point fifteen terahash. As of now, I have got eleven point six six terahash. So just under the twelve that I was talking about in that video that I said I was going to do, and that was because I had to transfer the amount of money from Bitcoin into um, Hashflare. The fee was something like. Thirty-five pound. Um, I'm sure someone out there is watching, and going, Glenn, why would you pay that? Why didn't you do this, this, and this, and this? But I had to transfer the money from Exodus into these guys, and that was the fee. Then I was short because I didn't have enough money to cover the price of the upgrade and the fees. So then I transferred some Litecoin into Bitcoin. That took like an hour, and that cost me about 25, 30 quid in bloody... And I only transferred over £50 pounds worth of Litecoin. So literally 50% of the transaction was a fee. Um, so I lost. I must have lost about 75 quid yesterday just tr like in fees of things. So this got me thinking with cryptocurrency, I believe we're still at the early stages, and this is a developing, obviously, technology... But it really made me think, me and my wife yesterday went to B&M, which is a discount store in the UK, if you're watching from another country. And we were just buying like Christmas decorations and bits. Now, I was at the checkout and she said, oh, I forgot my bank card. Now, she banks with Halifax, I bank with Lloyd's. And uh, she said, oh, I'll just transfer it in your account. And I said, all right, well, how much are you going to transfer so we know how much to spend? And she said, no, no, that's right, I'll do it at the end. And I thought, hmm... That's a bit risky, I suppose, because it might not go through properly. And then you've already scanned all your items. You stand there like a pleb with them, all the stuff in the bag waiting to go. But anyway, we did it. And she literally got her phone and went, how much is it? And I said, oh, it comes to, I think it was like £82. So she went there and transferred £82. And literally, as she said, yep, done, I put the card in the reader and I started typing my PIN number in. And it went through. So although people... Um, are talking about oh yeah cryptocurrencies this instant payment with like low transaction fees we already have that in the UK now I know people might say yeah but in the background it's like the banks the money actually takes three to five days to actually go over but the banks you know let you off that because they are pretty certain that money's going to go across do you know what I mean so they trust Halifax and Halifax trust Lloyd's and if one of them says, right, we're sending you this amount of money, it's going to take three days, your bank probably say, do you know what, Glenn, you can go and spend that because we've got reassurance from Halifax. Do you see what I mean? Um, but who, I don't care about any of that as a, as a consumer. All I care about is that my wife had her phone, she transferred the money, and it went through, and the woman let me leave the shop. You know, So I feel like we have already got transaction, like instant transaction and transaction fee-less money already. Um, I do believe cryptocurrency has its way in the world and it needs to catch up, obviously, with these banks. And obviously, banks have put in billions of pounds to get this technology the way they want it and they trust each other. I understand that if it's from... It might be different in another country. I, d I don't know if it works that quick in, say, America or, you know, in Asia. Um, but, you know, if... I, I have that now... 
I have the few what well, everyone keeps talking about the future of cryptocurrency. I have that now in my eyes um, in a very convenient, easy way. Um, but I still think that cryptocurrency has its place in the sense that obviously it's decentralized. That is probably the main thing that um, you know. I'm not trusting a bank. I'm trusting the currency, um, which I think is. Um, really powerful and like I said I think it brings power back to the people so we can all own a part of this currency and we all take responsibility of it whereas you can trust it all to the bank and they will do that for you um, but obviously they take their cut and their risks and they obviously pretty much brought the economy to a halt obviously about I don't know eight years ago or whenever it was so swings and roundabouts you know there's pros and negatives for everything but I'm hoping that obviously uh, these transaction fees and the time as well it took a good half hour 40 minutes for Hashflare to receive that money um, which is really slow in today's standards I suppose but then saying that obviously Hashflare isn't a trusted bank so if I transferred money from my my Lloyds bank into them that would probably take three to five days so you know I, I see where they're going but um from day to day use, it'd be great to see cryptocurrency have that, you know, like, hey, Bex, do you want me to transfer you a tenner? Here you go. Or no, uh, one Satoshi. Here you go, there you go. It's in your account now, and then she spends it, and then we walk out the shop. So that's my point of view. That's uh, Glenn's vision of the future. So I upgraded my hash flare. So I got 11.66, I didn't get the full 12, but it's close enough, I tried my best. <laughs> it cost me about $1,500 worth of uh, upgrade. Um, let me go to my history. Uh, not that one, history. Sorry if I'm babbling on and you don't want to watch it all. <laughs> oh no, now it's going to be even longer. <clears throat> so, um, done my upgrade and obviously uh, normally it, it gives you like a little indication of what you should earn every day or every uh, week with their charts. That hasn't updated yet. I don't know if that takes maybe 24 to 48 hours for it to um, update. Oh. Six. So I'll just show you here. See there it says um, I should be earning $3 USD a day. Obviously... Um, that hasn't taken into account the upgrade yet. I only did it last night, so I would imagine overnight tonight that should do it. And then tomorrow that should change. So I'll do a video again tomorrow and show you guys, so then you'll know if it's um, updating um, properly. That should change, I would estimate, to around about $24, $25 a day. And already, just from, even though that's a very small amount, uh, so I was discussing in that video about, you know, potentially doing these big upgrades and doing the reinvest option. I've gone to my history today and it for me another 0 0.01 of a terahash. That was $1.50. Um, because I'd received, if we go down to my um, transactions, oh, that's me purchasing money, but... You can see here I received 0.0000179 of a Bitcoin and then it's reinvested that and bought for me 0.01 terahash. Now once this kicks in, hopefully tonight, then tomorrow I should receive $25. So then I'll be getting 1.6, no, uh, 160 giga hashes, which is 0.16 of a terahash. And then obviously with that compounding every day, um, then obviously I should be gaining um, another terahash every 10 days. So give it, what day are we on today? December the 12th. So round about Christmas, uh, well, 22nd, 22nd really, um, I should have probably another terahash. So then I'll be at 12.66, roughly, this me just guesstimating. Um, but then obviously for that, instead of me gaining 160 giga hash a day, at that point I should be gaining sort of two, uh, uh, yeah, probably 200 giga hashes a day. So then I'll be receiving 0.2 of a terahash. 
And obviously that will keep that will only take five days then. Then I'll have another terahash. Then all of a sudden I'm receiving 0.3 every day of a terahash. So then all of a sudden it takes only three to four days to get a terahash. Do you see what I mean? And obviously with that compounding um, money, I, I think in a couple months' time, hopefully I should have probably nearer the 20 terahash mark and then I'm earning like a decent amount then. Um, maybe I'll stop that reinvestment uh option at that point so I can start getting some money back and trying to pay off of like I said to you guys I want to try and earn the money back that I put into it so then if it happens in the future it hasn't cost me nothing um, so that's what I'm looking to do I'm going away for two weeks at the end of December at the end of this month I'm going to Disney Florida um, on the 27th um, so I'll be away for two weeks then. So I'll probably, I'll, I probably will. I'd be checking my internet on my phone while I'm out there, which is really sad because I want to know what's going on with the markets. I might even try and upload you guys a video while I'm out there. But my videos are going to be very scarce for a couple of weeks. And then obviously when I get back, obviously with this doing its thing by itself, um, I'm imagining I'm going to come back sort of mid-January and I'm going to have like a decent amount of terahash. Um, and sort of a decent amount I should be earning every day, which will be fantastic. Um, but anyway, so that's where I'm at. Um, I want to say a big thank you. Um, but I believe when I showed you guys this, my uh, referral link yesterday, I had, um, <clears throat> I think there was two people that had bought and I think I had three registrations. So from that video, I've had five registrations now. I've had 29 people click on the link. Um, still only two people bought. But um, obviously, people have watched that video and they thought, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to sign up to um, Hashflare. So um, thank you very much for doing that. And um, all the support the video's got, the comments, um, lots of people have been commenting on that video saying how there's no money to be made in mining ASIC miners because the difficulty keeps going up. Um, Tyrone says 100 subs by Friday, which will be which will be awesome if I do. What am I at now? Uh, I don't know. I think it's 90 saying now. Um, you really need to do your research about difficulty changes, which I did mention about uh, difficulty these contracts on Hashflare are only profitable if the price of the coin stays as it is and the difficulty of mining those coins stays as it is. So bear that in mind. If one of them go up or down or both, you know, then obviously the amount of money you're going to receive each day and every month is going to change as well. So that's why this is quite unpredictable because if you have like, if you just put money, say, in a wallet and just thought, Do you know what, I'm going to sit back and just see what happens with this cryptocurrency thing. The only thing you've got to worry about is whether the price goes up or down. With a mining contract, one, you have to hope that the mining equipment doesn't break or the website doesn't get hacked or it doesn't go down or they ain't some sort of scam. Second, you have to worry about the difficulty. So you have to worry whether the difficulty has shot up or if it's gone down. And then you have to worry about the price increase. So you've got three different things there. One of them could go wrong or right or whatever. And the amount of money you start receiving can be completely different. So over Christmas, if that Bitcoin goes up to, I don't know, like 20,000, then I'm going to be earning even more money. Um, and I'm going to be um, seeing a return a lot faster. But if it goes down, because uh, everyone was saying it was going to go down yesterday and today because of the Bitcoin futures being offered on the um, markets um, where people in sort of Wall Street and that, I assume, bet. or Yeah, it's like betting. You're betting whether the price will go up or down. If it does, you get a reward. If it doesn't, then you lose out. Um, they were saying that they were going to ruin Bitcoin, but um, it's gone up. So um, if it keeps going up, then that's good news for me. And the difficulty changes once every two weeks, I believe. So um, it currently had a big jump up to 18%. Um, so hopefully it won't be such a big jump up next time. So then that then you're talking like a month before something could happen to disrupt it. So um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, another guy commented saying, 
Buying an ASIC miner is an absolute waste of money because the difficulty level increases dramatically. Every month your profit will be less and less. In the end, you won't be able to cover the buying price of the ASIC miner. GPU mining is far less profitable but gives you consistent amount of earnings. In my opinion, ASIC mining are both a waste of money for your time. Do not waste your money on them. Should research into Vest ICOs, most profitable if you invest in the right one which he is right, if you can get the right ICO at the right time, you can, I've seen him gain, you know, 200% in a day, 300%, 500%, you know, um, you can earn a lot of money in a short period of time through ICOs. But the key that he says there is invest on the right one. So what is the right one? You can read probably right now, there's probably about, I would say, 10 to 15 ICOs that are starting today. And there'll be another 10 to 15 tomorrow. There'll be another 10 to 15 the next day. How do you pick the right one? Um, if you are sort of got an, a lot of money to throw about, you can sort of throw a £1,000 at one, £1,000 at another. And if one of them goes up 10%, but you lose out on the other 10, then you, 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 know, you can do it that way. Obviously, the way I'm the amount of money that I have available, I'm sort of putting all my eggs in one basket with ICOs and I'm going to see how that goes um, and see whether the price goes up. But that's to do with mining as well. So really my goal is always to mine because I believe in this period of where Bitcoin is, it's being watched by the world now, but it's still not, um, people are just looking, they're not taking part as such. Um, obviously people, uh, some people are, but not a lot. I mean, I was watching a video yesterday about um, people investing in the, um, what was we just talking about a second ago, the shorts and longs, the uh, futures, and they were saying, oh, Bitcoin's worth 30, no, 300 billion, which sounds a lot, that, you know, sounds mega money, but then it showed you gold, um, the US economy, and saying, anyway, I was showing you, it was like 9 trillion for gold and the US housing market was, you know, 100, it was all quoting these insane numbers. So it was saying, oh, Bitcoin's actually a small time player for these other guys that are betting on those sort of things. Um, so the world is watching. And while we're in this period, um, if you can accumulate as much as possible, when it does click and it becomes more sort of used and sought after, then people that gain the coins at the beginning, they're going to profit. As the same as the last couple of years, people that bought Bitcoin and held on to them when they were worth, you know, two, three hundred dollars, obviously they're laughing now. So that's my opinion. So my plan has always been to accumulate coins. That That is literally it. Um, I just want to accumulate coins and I want to hold on to them um, and just sell them when I feel the time is right. So that I could put a deposit down on a house. <laughs> that is it. That is my whole business structure plan um, laid out on a table. So um, that's that's it really. Um, but obviously, like I say, what is the right way of accumulating these coins? Is it GPUs? Is it ASIC? Is it cloud mining? Is it ICOs? Is it just buying some and holding on to them? Um, these are all valid routes to go down and at the minute they're all sort of making money in their own way but which is the one that's going to last long term wise obviously i don't know the answer to that and obviously i've just put a big investment into for me a big investment into cloud mining so um i, I believe that's the quickest way to accumulate that amount of coins um but let let me know what your thoughts are and where you think it's going so i said at the beginning um that i might be gaining a Antminer S9 for about $75, I think it was, um, which uh, I went, I joined up with this uh, site called Hashnet because I was review, oh, I was looking into um, loads of different sort of mining websites and Hashnet came up as one of them. Hashnet, I realized I already had an account with because it's actually owned and operated by Bitmain. Obviously, the people that make the Antminer S9, or all the Antminers. And they own a few different websites. They own btc.com, they own Hashnet, Hashnet, sorry, um, obviously Bitmain, and they own some other technology for Sankels. But I joined up, or 
went into this website, realised I already had an account with them, um, and I was sort of like trying to figure out how I can um, mine using these guys. They show you graphs of what they're earning each day. And from what I can gather, it's not like the other online cloud services where you're buying hash rate. You actually are buying the machine that they set up for you their end and start mining and you just accumulate the money. It says here, uh, so if you go to shop, it's got Antminer L3 Plus. Um, that's how much power, but you can see here it says out of stock, so you can't buy it anyway. It says miners will be shipped and deployed within 72 hours of payment. The hash rate will take 72 hours to be credited to your account. So I believe, this is a slightly different bit business structure, you are actually buying the machine off them at the full price that they charge on their website. They're then setting it up their country uh, for you in your name, and they start, obviously they power it, and it starts running at a rate that they think is optimal. So if I look at the S9, now they obviously advertise the S9 being able to run at 14 or 14 and a half terahashes per second, but I said if I received one, I'd probably run it at 12, 12 and a half gigahash, uh, terahashes, and they're saying the same thing here. They're saying that if they set one of these S9s up, it'll be running at um, 12.5 terahashes, which is 1,250. 12,500 giga hashes per second. Um, so yeah, slightly different business structure, but they're all sold out. Everything's sold out, still can't buy one. So I thought, oh well, at least it gives me another route of how to get an S9. Uh, maybe maybe they appear in stock quicker on this website than they do the other one, because I'm sure they would prefer to mine four people and people pay a fee for that, because obviously they're going to accumulate some Bitcoin out of all these machines that they're making. Um, but then I went down to this lucky hash. I thought, what's this? I didn't, I didn't get it at first, and I actually left it alone. Then I came back to it about 24 hours later, um, and essentially it's a lottery. So they sell a thousand tickets, and for every ticket sold, uh, it costs about 0 0.0015 of a bitcoin. So that equates to about $20, which is about £15 in UK. Um, and they give you the S9, whoever wins that lottery. So I actually bought six of them, six numbers I've got here. Um, and it does explain, I won't go through it all, but they explain how they generate the number that's going to win, and there's a formula. The winning number is the sum of the last 100 timestamps ordered placed, um, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then it gives you an example, and then it tells you what if you've won and what happens. Um, and then I went to history, no, not history, uh, lucky man, let's say. It actually tells you, <coughs> at the last fact, because this isn't done by time, this isn't like, oh, once a week or once a month, it's just by when they've sold a thousand tickets. Now, this is very profitable for them, because you think if they are selling a thousand tickets each time, worth, each ticket is, what did I say, 15, which is about $20, times that by $20, 20,000 pounds, um, I don't know why I needed a calculator for that. £20,000 for an Antminer S9, um, which obviously really has only cost them sort of a thousand, or they would have been able to sell for a thousand dollars. So they're literally, but these guys obviously, like this person bought one ticket and he won an Antminer S9. If we go to the person the day before, he bought a hundred tickets. So out of that thousand, he had a 10% chance of winning, which he did. Day before, someone won it with 10 tickets. So you can actually view all the history, actually. Um, and this is all the research I was doing um, before. Oh, here we go. So this is uh, who's won every every time they've done this. Um, and it tells you... Oh, no, sorry. These are the people that have bought the tickets in this current running... Um, oh, no, that is... Sorry. So this is how they accumulated the number, the one that won. Um you can view their lucky number, so they're the ones they bought. So it's really in-depth, really open and honest. So that made me sort of think, gave me a bit of confidence. And I was like, do you know what? For if I put if I buy 
so many tickets and I used the Bitcoin that I'd gained or the amount of money that I'd gained with Bitcoin going up that day. So obviously Bitcoin, since I'd done this, because I bought it when Bitcoin was on a down, the amount of Bitcoin they want for this has stayed the same. It's still 0.0015, but it was that the other day when Bitcoin was only worth, you know, I don't know, 15 and a half, 16,000. Now it's worth 17,000. So the amount of money it cost was less. So anyway, I bought it and for me it worked out about $75, which was about 100, uh, which is about, I'd say, 50 British pounds. I bought six tickets. So out of that 1,000, I've got six chances of winning this Ant Miner S9. But there are some people in here that buy the 100 at a time. So you can see this guy here. Um, he's bought a hundred tickets, um, and they're all his codes. So he's got. He's obviously got probably the highest chance, uh, as well as this person. Um, but when I was going through that history, I noticed that a lot of them were. Um, a lot. Of, I mean, that one's a. That one's just one. Uh, someone bought one ticket, but I was going through them, and there are a lot of people that have bought look, 100, 100, 100. 100, 100, so I don't know if 100 maybe is the maximum you can buy because a lot of these have bought 100 tickets. So the chances of me winning it obviously are low because those two guys that are in it, um, they obviously have 100 each, so they own t they've got a, a 1 in 5 chance, one of them two getting it. So it's very unlikely, but I thought, you know what? For that sort of money, I'll, I'll put it down. I'll give it a try. If I did win, I'd have an Ant Miner S9, which would be absolutely awesome. That would be another 12 terahashes of mining for me um, at the very low cost. Um, I don't know how quick these get up to the 1,000 because it's gone up about 100 since I checked two days ago. So I would imagine this is going to take a few days. And obviously, if you're watching this, you might join in. Um, and that will go up quicker. I did go to my history, and it shows you your um, numbers that you've bought. So, uh, oh no, sorry, I bought I bought them in three different uh, transactions. I bought one at first, then I bought four more, and then I bought one more. Um, and you can actually share these, so you can share them on Facebook and Twitter. And what they say is, if it gets shared. 10 times um, then they'll give you another to another uh, ticket for free so I was really hoping I asked people on Facebook if they could share it I think about three or four people shared it so if you are on my Facebook bit Glen or Twitter if you're on my Twitter that's probably the most popular one um, please go to my profile you'll see it on there and if you could just share it or retweet it for me, because you might get gain me an extra ticket, which obviously increases my chances. So um, that's how you could win. If you want to take part in that, go to hashnest.com. It's part of Bitmain, so they're the people that actually make these machines. So if anyone's got them, it's them. So I do believe that this is available and it's not some sort of scam. Um, They've got loads of support and there's loads of information on here. I spend ages reading through this whole website. So I do feel pretty confident that they're not just trying to pull the wall over people's eyes. So that's it from me, guys. This has been a really long video, so I apologize about that. Um, my channel, just because people like always like to ask, has now got 95 subscribers. So in five more subscribers, I'll do 100 uh, subscriber videos. Thank you very much for all your support. Um, What's more important to me actually is probably the comments. I love people commenting on the videos. They're, even if their views are against mine, if they're saying, Glenn, you're chatting rubbish, I think this. Because it makes me think, yeah, why did I think that? And, oh, yeah, but I, I agree with him on that point, but not on that. You know. So even if it's negative, um, please comment your thoughts down below. We're all trying to help each other here. Um, I don't want there to be any sort of like, oh, I hope he doesn't do well. You know, you may think that. But we're all... I want us all to be a community of crypto nights <laughs> and we all help each other out and uh, comment on each other's comments and uh, give each other advice. So please do all that. Don't forget to subscribe, like and follow me on all those social medias 
and I look forward to seeing you on the next video and hopefully I'll be able to show you my Hashflare account um, that has updated with the new amount of Bitcoin that I should be receiving a day. If you want to join up with Hashflare and you want to click my referral link, again, obviously I get a commission if you do buy sank. If you don't, if you just join up, I get absolutely nothing. So if you do buy Hash Power, then um, I get something. But don't feel you have to. Just join up to it by yourself if you want. I'm just offering advice. If you want to help me out, get to my hash rate and get my one whole Bitcoin, that's my goal, um, you'll be helping me out. So uh, click that link just below this item description, uh, uh, sort of video description. <laughs> it's not eBay. <laughs> um, but I'll see you guys on the next video. So see you later, guys. Bye.